you th you think you're missing watching Manchester United. They haven't played for 18 days. Oh, yeah, I want to see United back in action. Eh, then you watch United and you remember why you don't miss watching Manchester United at the moment. One all draw there against Leicester. If we had a 10% chance of getting into the top four this season, that's now dropped to 1%. Arsenal playing Crystal Palace on Monday night. Win there. They're cruising. Top four, dead and buried. This team, they look dead and buried. This season is dead and buried. Where do we go from here? What do we do next? How can we possibly get to the end of the season quicker than we possibly can? That's what it seems like. Today, we had no Cristiano Ronaldo. He had illness. We had no Cavani. Of course he didn't. He was injured. Of course he was. We had no striker on the pitch. We had Bruno playing as a false nine. We had Sancho and Elanga on the wings. And we had four central midfielders and two wingers as our front six. Marcus Rashford left on the bench. Says a lot, really, about how much Ralph Rannick doesn't trust Marcus Rashford. And that game in itself was just... Hey, it, was, it was exactly what you probably thought it was going to be. I don't think anybody's coming away from that game with any level of surprise. At all, really. First 15 minutes, 20 minutes, first half. A tragically bad game of Premier League football from both teams. Both Leicester and Manchester United. No panache, no tempo in the passes. McTominay, was he lucky to avoid a red card? I didn't think so in the first instance, but then watching it back on the replay, studs were high. If it was given as a red card, you wouldn't massively begrudge the referee. Looking at the uh, player ratings, they've gone for Fred with a 7.9. I'll tell you what, pa past the Fred. There's not that many players who can come out with any sort of credit this season for a Manchester United player. Fred is one of those players. Today, again, he's so much better when he plays as a higher midfielder on the pitch. But today really isn't the day to talk about individual performances. It's just, I can't believe, genuinely, I can't believe that at the start of the season, I thought this team was one midfielder away from competing for the Premier League. I genuinely felt like I, I properly felt and, and believed that. And look at us now. I feel disjointed from the team again. How can Manchester United have such a swing in the season? I think it's sort of symptomatic of where we are as a football club and the swings that we have are just huge. When you win, it's the best thing in the world. When you lose, ah, sack everybody, get rid of every player, let's start again. When you're looking at that team there and you're looking at the performances from everybody and you're looking at who play well, as I said, I don't really want to focus on individuals, but I'll tell you one thing I would say. What are you doing, Anthony Alanga? Why are you tackling Marcus Rashford at the end there? My God, Marcus Rashford was a bit of a ghost, but he was on the verge of scoring what would have been a wonderful winner. It looked like he probably would have scored if Alanga wasn't there. That was a weird decision. Anthony, what are you doing? What are you doing, son? Get out of the goddamn way. VAR was probably our second man in the back, the second best player on the, on, the, on the pitch there behind Fred. It was, it was definitely a foul on Ran uh, when he got his leg swept by Leonacho. But if we're looking at how we played there today, they've got it down as a 4 2 3 1 there. It wasn't really. It was a 4 triple 2 in the first half. Pobble was playing up alongside Bruno Fernandes. Manchester United without Ronaldo, without Cavani, without Martial, who's out on loan. And of course, without Greenwood and no Rashford on the pitch. We had no striker on the team. And we didn't know what to do. We didn't know what to do. I said it for the game. I was hoping that today we were going to see a bit of a blinder from Bruno Fernandes because I felt like we needed a like a properly mature performance from him as number nine. Man City can play that formation there, the false nine, and they can do it so well. And the reason it works is because they genuinely, properly, as a team, collective press. And when you press like that and you win the ball high up the pitch, in the first half, the only time we had a real big opportunity was when Fred intercepted the pass, slid Bruno through, very tame shot from Bruno. Schmeichel swept it away with his legs. The false nine works when you play like a proper team, collective unit, everybody's pressing properly. And it's just the fact of the matter is we've never really truly looked like a collective unit under Ralph Ragnick. Is that down to the manager? Is that down to the players? The chicken or the egg and the fucking argument I'm bored of having as a Manchester United fan. Because as I said, I cannot believe that honestly, I, I feel like I'm sort of deluded. And the fact that I thought it, that I was so categorically wrong. I felt this team was one midfielder away from competing for the Premier League. And I compare that thought now to looking at that team there and thinking about how far that team is away from competing from the Premier League. And it is light years. It's light years. And nothing's going to change between now and the end of the season. 
if the players aren't going to respond for the Atletico Madrid game, if the players aren't going to respond for games against uh, Man City, uh, if they're not going to respond for those games, and they're not going to respond today there against Leicester in a game where realistically, if you're going to hold on to the coattails of anything this season, you're holding on to that 10% chance, you might get into the top four if Arsenal decide to mess it all up and Spurs also at the same time. But instead, it was just a performance where it was apathetic. It was the players were like, another just a meh. And then I can't be asked. I can't be asked as a fan anymore. We're players who are like that. It's, football's a simple game, man. All you got, when it comes to relationships between fans and players, the easiest way to make that bond is just to look like you're giving a fuck on the pitch. All right? Players get forgiven. Fred's worked his socks off to get back into this position. And not only is he working his socks off now, but he's actually doing match-changing performances. Last two games as well. Like, fantastic against Atletico Madrid. Remember that skill he did? But just not, the, not just that. It was the overall intensity and the tenacity that he shows. And it stands out like a sore thumb among a team of passengers. And it's happened all season long. Sancho and Marcus Rashford both left out of the England squad. And, and there today we saw two players who just looked bereft of confidence. And Sancho was looking red hot before the international break. It was so long ago. It was nearly a fucking month ago. But that team there today, they... Sh I think Leicester will probably feel hard done by. It, you know, because of that goal they got disallowed, they're going to think, oh, why wasn't Matomane sent off for the red car? VAR is working against us, X, Y, Z. Overall, a draw is a, probably a fair result. But it was a crap draw. It was a crap performance from United. It was a largely crap performance. No, yeah, it was actually quite largely ineffective from Leicester is what I would call their performance. But United just from front to back, just crap. Just another, an, add that game to 10, 15, 20, hell even 30 games this season in all competitions where you just watch United and you go, it's happened again. It's happened again. Another passive performance for United where they just let the, the game pass them by. They don't want to take control of it. They don't want to conduct the orchestra. They don't want to lead. They just want to go and wait and get to the 90th minute as quickly as possible by putting in the least amount of effort as possible. The minimum. The minimum requirements. As I said, it's like passing first year at uni. You've got to get 40%. They don't really care. But you show up. You're like, hello, here I am. That's how Manchester United players play so much. And what will change that? Will Eric Ten Hagen come in? Will Mauricio Pochettino come in with a magic wand and change all that? Hell no, they will not. They're, they're, you're looking at a mentality that has festered itself like the upside down in Stranger Things. And it's hard to get rid of. Do we have an 11? <laughs> Who's going to be our 11? We need one of those. Jeez. We need someone with psychic powers to come in and really just get rid of the... I don't know. Like a dark shadow, a cloud that's just been in our club for a long, long time. And the optimism of, of certain points this season just gets swept away like a crashing wave. I feel like, I, I, I don't know, I'm chatting shit now. I really am. But just watching that game, 18 days we waited for that. 18 days to see United back in action. 18 days to go, you know what? Fuck it. Let's have a, let's have a strong end to the season, man. I know we're out of the Champions League. I know we're realistically probably not going to be getting top four. But let's, let's just try and do this, eh? Let's, for the next like five, six, seven games, however many games we've got left, let's push. Let's see how much we can get out of this team. Instead, United came out there and they had one foot in the spa on the first minute. They just didn't want to commit themselves. They didn't want to overexert themselves. They didn't really want to get out of second gear. And I'll tell you what, tactically, it just didn't work today at all. Missing Ronaldo, missing Cavani and not having a centre forward. Bruno Fernandes was operating as a false nine, but then he was on left wing. He was right wing. Positional discipline has always been a bit of a weakness of his game. And if you're going to play him in the false nine position, you can't expect to ever have somebody in the box. And it happened to United like five, six, seven times today where we had the ball, we were going forward. There are, there's nobody in the box. Okay, well, I have to pass it backwards. And that kept repeating itself, repeating itself, allowing Leicester to drop deep into their shape again. And United just had no penetration whatsoever. Limp performance. United, I'm not fortunate to get the draw. I think the draw is a fair result, but it was just damp squib. Absolute damp squib. As I said, if we had a 10% chance of getting into the top four before that game, that's two more points dropped. If Arsenal beat Crystal Palace on Monday, they've effectively secured top four, depending on what Spurs do. Depends there. You let me know what you think about the game in the comments below. But yeah, Matt, can we just... Can we just go back to like a 52-week international break and just just not watch United ever, ever, 